with understanding. Isolated. Gets that defender dancing. Change of pace. Little floater in the end one. Stop it, Reed mm. Shepard. Crossover. <laughs> Hand up. I have no idea what that guy was talking about, and he doesn't either, with his description of Reed Shepard's incredible possible double dribble highlight that he had in summer league action in the first game of his career with the Houston Rockets. Can we play that first part again, Sean? What in God's name is that guy talking about? Oh, wow. He went mixtape. Oh, he was deep in his bag like the fries were at the bottom. He was deep in his bag like the fries were at the bottom. I understand that there is a term in your bag. It's supposed to be a golf term, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like using a five iron or your three wood or your nine iron. This is iron. a very Pogalant thing. It's it's also a basketball thing. Deep in his bag, but it would be a golf term that brings it into this. Deep in his bag? I'm sorry. This man is not allowed to say that. He's not allowed to say that. Wow. A am, am I perhaps uh, wow. being racist against my own people? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just oh. I just don't buy that coming out of that guy's mouth. That's Mark Jones, who's black. Oh, it is? Yes. I can't hear color, as you can tell right now. <laughs> I, 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 eh, I'm i sorry, no. So now you're telling a black man what he can't say. Well, listen, he kind of sounded white there. You got, what, what you, got you, rules, say? you got rules on this golf course. <laughs> what do you want me to say? He sounded Are you white? a member at the River Oaks Country Club? <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, you're not allowed in with these shoes. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I I just I just don't I don't like that. I don't like that. Fries at the bottom of the bag like that implies sloppiness. You know, they're probably cold too if they fall out of the actual fry car. All right, all right. Reed Shepherd. Reed Shepherd. I am buying into the hype, baby. I am buying in to the hype. And I know it's the summer league, and most of these guys are never going to play in the NBA. Don't care. He looks really, really good. He looks special. He has, I think, some handles that I did not know he had. I really thought of him, and look, I'm not going to act like I study NBA prospect film. I don't even do that for NFL draft film. But I was of the impression that Reed Shepard was going to be more of those uh, a, a shooter who was good on defense and is longer than his height indicates. We saw some defensive ability from him. We saw some, I think, really nifty and creative passing from him as well. And surprisingly really good handle. Is that going to work against real NBA players? I don't know. But if you got John Morant and Trey Young complimenting him the way that they were online, you, you, you got to give that some credence and in these two summer league games this to this point and he's had a lot of help with Cam Whitmore out there they might be just more talented than every team that they're playing against in the summer league but I am really impressed by everything I've seen out of Reed Shepard to this point with the Houston Rockets and I, I think we got legit reason to be excited about him year one how much is he going to play I don't know Fred Van Vliet's probably a starting point guard but whoo really like what I'm seeing out of Reed Shepard yeah you can throw in all the caveats of it's only been two summer league games, like pump the brakes, all this stuff. You rather be using those caveats when your guy's playing awesome than when he sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it would be if he sucked. We would also be doing well. You know, it's early. We'll right. give him time. He needs to adjust. But it again, you it feels much better to be like <laughs> this guy <laughs> probably won't average twenty points a game uh, in the regular season. So. You can take that with a grain of salt. Obviously, the role is going to be different when you add all the best players in the league yeah. <laughs> back into the mix. 100%. Uh, but, I mean, more it's more of what he's doing that you're like, oh, I didn't know he could do that. Exactly. He's capable of more than you probably expected. Yeah. And even, like you said, he's going to come off the bench uh, this year, unless basically unless Fred Van Vliet gets hurt. It's the, basically the only reason he wouldn't uh, he would start on this team this year. But... It, it, the summer league is le is obviously worse competition, but it is it does give you a peek of what he can do in a second unit for sure. Because who's he playing next to? He's playing next to Cam Whitmore, who's going to be on the second unit, and AJ Griffin, who if he's in the rotation is going to be on the uh, coming off the bench. So there is some portability with what he can do um, this season 
in, in his role this season, and we're kind of getting a bigger glimpse at it in, you know, obviously he's the starting point guard for the Summer League team. Uh, but you can't watch what Reed Shepard's done. It's not just that he's putting up numbers. It's how he's playing that you're like, oh, okay. This, yeah, exactly. This works. And, you know, to to make things even more exciting and what you're seeing out of Reed Shepard, you're getting the kind of rhetoric that a team will claim it felt about a player five years after the fact, five years after the draft, Oh, we thought he might be good in the draft, but you know we went in another direction. We're already seeing this, courtesy of the Atlanta Hawks. Adam Finkelstein is, I believe, an NBA reporter, and he was asked about perhaps some um, second guessing of themselves by the Atlanta Hawks when it comes to not getting Reed Shepard instead drafting the French guy Rissaché with the first overall pick. Here is something that's going to make you think that. This is Bill Polian talking. See this. The Atlanta Hawks viewed Reed Shepard as a, quote, potential Mahomes type of player, and he was number two on their board. And ultimately, they went with the guy that had better size. But it'll be interesting to see where Reed Shepard goes and what kind of career he has because he was the player that finished second in this race to the Hawks to Reese And we might well see down the road that it could be, well, a potential mistake because they seem they put the Shepard Mahomes comp in this regard. What if Reed Shepard turns into one of the best three point shooters in the NBA? What if he's a guy who can give you 22, 24, 26 points per game? If that's the case, you would have automatically taken him. We don't have the answer to that. Reese say narrowly beats out Shepard to go to. They're doing damage control two games into the summer league. The Hawks, who are a terrible organization and have been for a very long time. They've been one of those rough watches in the NBA, probably going all the way back to what, like the mid 2010s when they used to have Joe Johnson. And uh, uh, <laughs> even that we're talking about, like the glory days are losing in the second round. Yeah. Or as an eight seed taking the Celtics to seven, <laughs> seven games. Yeah. Right, this has been a joke organization for a really long time. That they are perhaps second guessing drafting a French man, Reese Arche, uh two games into the summer league, and that Reed Shepard is putting these kind of highlights out there is really a reflection more of how sad the Hawks are more than it is confirmation that Shepard's going to be great. But I love seeing it that the Hawks viewed him as a Patrick Mahomes type of prospect. Hell yeah, baby. The Rockets got him. A, what does that even mean? Like, what are, <laughs> what are we talking about here? He's a Patrick Mahomes level prospect. You know what you do if you think a guy is a Patrick Mahomes level take draft? Take him! Yeah, you just pick him. <laughs> you take I don't him. know. Were they like, well, you know, Mahomes slipped in the draft, so we got we to gotta do our part and make sure he slips in the draft. Make sure we're the Chicago Bears of this. Actually, the Chicago Bears of this would be the... Uh, would be the, the, the Hawks, uh, Wizards. Yeah. Oh, the Wizards. <laughs> the, gotcha. the Wizards too. Even worse, yeah. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I don't get what they're doing here. I mean, I get what they're doing. I don't get what they're trying to say here. Because even in that clip, they're like, yeah, but they ended up, you know, basically what they said was he can beat Patrick Mahomes if he's one of the best shooters in the league. Ultimately, they went with Richard Shea. It's like, wait, but why? <laughs> what was the like downside? They didn't, they didn't leak out like. Uh, but we we weren't sure. Like it was just we weren't sure about. It. It's like, well, yeah, he's not going to be LeBron, or you know, right. like anyone with the brain is like, yeah, that guy's going to be awesome in the league. Or Wim and Yama last year, like, like guys, this is the the draft. Like no one is going to be a surefire guy, especially the guy you ended up picking. Like this guy doesn't look that good. What are we talking about? I think the Hawks should have just said like. Listen, we wanted to draft him, but he looks like he'll get your dad, his, his dad, to sue you. Yeah, like, like let's be honest, like that. There's some discrimination going on. Like some of us handsome, uh, smaller white people, like that people underestimate us. They underestimate us. It just happens, okay? Like we can't help it when we're good-looking guys that also look like they've never done hard labor in their life. <laughs> like they have a maid, perhaps two. For each wing of the house that they live in. Yeah. Thank God Reed Shepard went to Kentucky and not Duke. I know. He does look like <laughs> such a Duke guy, too. But he's a, he's an old school Kentucky. I mean, because his dad literally played for Kentucky. But, like, <laughs> he's an old school Kentucky guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before they start sending guys to the draft every year, ironically enough, like Reed Shepard, who's a one and done and picked third overall. Man.
The Reed Shepherd era, guys. It's going to be fun. And, and, I mean, you see Rafael Stone out there. Rafael Stone is, is so cocky right now. You could tell. He was on Sirius XM Radio, I think, with Justin Termine. And, and um, I forget the other person who was on with him. But he, he was asked about, like, hey, were you a little nervous about Reed Shepherd? Was he going to be able to, you know, adapt to the pick and roll? And, and Stone may as well have just put his feet up on the table while answering this question. He's so pumped about getting this guy. What I really, yeah, I just saw him making the right read over and over and over again, right? And so the theory, my theory was, he, he, yeah, he didn't have a ton of reps in it like a guy who plays in maybe a more sure. heliocentric offense. But every time he, he was in it, he looked comfortable. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always a challenge deciding if a guy can do something that they haven't done a lot of. And we, you know, we, 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 we're, yeah, we're a little cognizant of that. We weren't 100%, but, but I would say we'd seen enough to be pretty comfortable that, that it was going to be, sure. that it was going to be a, a tra- an easy transition for him, whether easy meant a day, like kind of we saw, mm-hmm. we saw, you know, we saw two days ago, or it meant six months. From our perspective, we don't really care. We thought all this, the, we thought the package was there to be, to become a very good pick and roll player. Hell yeah, dude. Now, he's just talking about the pick and roll side of it, but Rafael Stone wanted to say right there, yeah, we just got cocaine curry, bitch. That's right. Yeah. He can get away with double dribbles. White privilege, baby. On the court. They're just so shocked at how much he's dribbling. That they're, mm-hmm. I whoa. know. They're so confused here. <laughs> it's like the scene in Semi-Pro when they throw an alley-oop. Uh, 713-780-3776 to call to text. Philip wants to talk about being deep in bags. Philip, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? I just wanted to say, have you ever be like reached deep in the bag and got that onion ring at the bottom? You're like, I mean, that's what he's talking about. It's like, I mean, and, and on top of that, I just want to say, like Bronny James, like they give him so much hype. Like, I know. They're, there's there's no there's no uh I mean, I don't know what's going on in the NBA, but uh, uh Bronny James true for thirteen or whatever he, he whatever whatever he shot. Like they're not talking about that. I mean they're talking about that and not reach like he's like the greatest player I mean, and you got this guy just hitting threes hitting buckets I, I, and I'm that's with what you, he's Phil. talking about deep in the bag deep in the bag okay listen like that, he finds the onion ring fi- finding that onion ring see that that is a little bit better because onion rings uh this is going to be a controversial take onion rings better than french fries onion rings are better than french fries i'll stand on that oh i don't like onions oh you're soft soft boys wednesday 12 30 you don't like onions soft onions rule French fries are okay. It varies place to place. But to Phillip's point with the Bronny James Jr. stuff, the reason that people are talking about him as much as they are is because we live in a society that is based off of clicks, and his name, for whatever reason, it gets clicks. There's still a lot of LeBron James stands out there that are going to tell you that his seed is just as good, even though they're completely talking out of their ass. Well, that mixed with Laker fan. That too. Laker, Laker. Perfect storm Recent of Recent Laker draft pick is going to be overrated no matter what. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, mix that in with the fact that we're talking about Zachary Richarche as the number one pick and uh, Alex Saar as the number two pick. They got to get you to watch these summer league games. And the way they're going to do it is saying, LeBron James jr is here which is basically what they're doing but they're going hey remember lebron this guy's his son I, watch him play when you have those some of the highlights that reed shepherd has put out you would think that they would dedicate a little bit more of the yeah. sports center highlight package during a time where literally nothing is going on to reed shepherd it's just a thought is is reed shepherd too boring do people look at Reed Shepard and, and sort of shrug collectively because of the way that he looks hashtag racism but I, I I don't know what it is. You would think that he would have gotten a little bit more buzz. Thankfully, the internet exists. We yeah. got plenty of it from the NBA Twitter account, the Rockets Twitter account, and all the Rockets Stan accounts that we have in town. But I, I am with Philip. his point there. It was weird that they did not, the first time when these two teams played Friday, when it was the Rockets and Lakers, yeah. they spent a lot more time on Bronny James, where Reed Shepard had a good three to four really impressive highlights that I think merited 
a watch. I wonder how much of that is that it was like game one and there hasn't been time. So now he has a little bit of momentum where, and I don't know. Listen, I'll be honest. I don't know who they play next. I don't know how many games they play in the summer league. I don't either. All I know is that we Would, might have, Sean, in one year, Sugarland Space Cowboys, first half PCL champs, oh yeah. Houston Rockets, waiting on those t-shirts. NBA Summer League champs, Title Town. Yeah. We're back! Also, either Cam Whitmore back-to-back Summer League MVPs or Cam Whitmore last year, Reed Shepard this year, Summer League MVPs. Ooh, we're just building, building that young core, as they say. Core 7. You know what? You know what? Core seven? I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to listen. If Reed Shepard's playing like this. I am too. I'm willing to listen. Is Reed Shepard the next Caitlin Clark? 713-780-3776 to call in. Is Reed Shepard the next Larry Bird?